Hey y'all, it's Mr. Boyden. I'm back at it again today, and today we're going to be talking about arcs and angles. When you see that word arcs, you should know that we're talking about a circle, and you, in this initial visual here, you can kind of see um, some circles here. Specifically, this is an arc. Okay, An arc just means it's a portion of that circle. Okay, it's That outside of the circles. There's an arc. We've got an arc here. Um, this whole bridge span, possibly, it might be parabolic, but it might also be an arc. I'm not sure. Okay, and then we got a couple more arcs over here. So let's get to the new learning. Okay, to get us started, um, let's think about this question. I want you to try this one. So go ahead and pause it, give it a shot, and hit play when you're ready. All right. So they gave us that this was 51 degrees. This is an inscribed angle. We talked about that in the previous video. And we've got another inscribed angle over here. And then what we're asked for is X. So how could we figure out what X is? I'm going to first think about this triangle. This triangle, what do I know about its side lengths? It's not equilateral because that's 51. They'd all be 60 if it was equilateral. But I know that since that's the center of the circle, these are each radii. So they're the same. Okay, they're congruent. And if that's true, this is isosceles, so this is also 51. We know a triangle has 180 degrees, so that makes this 78, and we have a linear pair right here, so that means that x is 102 degrees. All right, let's talk about inscribed angles for a second. Okay, the measure of an angle inscribed in a circle, let's color code this so we know what goes with what. An angle inscribed in a circle, also called an inscribed angle, okay, that's angle A on here, is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. So I'm going to make up example numbers for this. It's not the actual numbers, but I'm going to make up numbers here. What that means is if this was 100, this would be half as much, this would be 50. Okay, what if I made up another example? If that's the center, and we go like this, and if I come over here, okay, we're going to have an inscribed angle, and it's going to go like this. And what if I tell you that this angle here, you know what, let's do it the other way. I'll give you the inscribed angle. What if I say that this is 30? The question is, what is the number of degrees, what is the measure of the central angle then? Okay, the central angle is the one that's twice as big, so in this case it would be 60. Okay, this is something that's going to come up a lot today. So this is when you definitely want to pause the video and write this down in your notes so that you have it. I would encourage you to draw both of these examples so that you have something to look back on if you get confused later. So, let's try to answer this question. What if two inscribed angles intercepted the same arc? All right, the arc that we're gonna use for this example is the arc that goes from C to B. So what if two angles both intercepted that arc? Let's do first an inscribed angle from E. So I'm gonna draw this in. So what do we know about angle E? We know that it is half as big as angle A. Now what if I moved E and moved it over here? Based on what we just learned, what do you know about angle E? It's still an inscribed angle, so it's still half of angle A. This is kind of surprising, at least it was for me at first, that no matter where I move this angle, it's the same angle. It's still half as big as angle A. So what this question is getting at is if you had two different angles that were inscribed, so an angle at E and an angle at D, and both of them intercepted the same arc from C to B, how would their measures compare? Well, I think this clearly shows that they would be congruent. And you can actually see it. I can move angle E over onto angle D or vice versa. And yeah, it's the same angle. Okay, they line up with each other. So let's answer this question. What if two inscribed angles intercepted the same arc? Well, we would know that the, ins the two inscribed angles inscribed angles are congruent. That's what we would know. Let's do an example. 
This one's got a lot of labeling to do, so why don't you pause the video, label up your picture, and then give it a try. If you get stuck or if you want to see how you did, then hit play. Here we go. They tell us that arc AB is 70 degrees. Let's label that. Arc CD is 15 degrees. Arc DE is 65 degrees. Measure of ABF is 62. ABF is 62. And then we are asked for arc BC. Okay, so that's this one up here. Angle BAC. So I'm going to make a note. We're being asked for this angle. Well, if we knew this arc, that would be easy. It's an inscribed angle going to the arc. So we need to know what BC is first. And then we also are asked for what EF is. I think the easiest one to start with maybe is EF. Okay, EF, um, we notice right here, these two segments are parallel. These are parallel chords. And what that means is that the section or the arc of the circle that's intersected by them on each side has to be congruent. So if this is 15, this over here is also 15. Okay, so that's probably the easiest one. EF is 15 degrees. All right, what else? So we need to find this angle here. We also need to find BC. Um, I'm wondering if you know how many degrees are in the arc given by AF? And there it is. You might want to think about that for just a second. Notice the inscribed angle that intersects that arc. That's 62 right here. If this is 62, maybe it's easier, if I, easier to see if I draw in the central angle, or maybe it's more confusing. If it's more confusing, don't draw it on your page. But what we learned a minute ago is that the central angle would be twice as big as the inscribed angle. So if we double 62, we get 124, which means that's 124. And I'm going to get rid of these extra segments because I'm not sure we need them anymore. Okay. Now, how am I going to find this missing arc over here? Well, Notice this question is about a circle. And right now, every arc except for this one, arc BC, that's the only one that isn't labeled. And we know that every circle is gonna have a grand total of 360 degrees if you go around. So let's subtract off all the known arcs. So minus 70, minus 124, minus 15, and 15 again is 30, and minus 65. And let's see what that is. So 360, I'm gonna type that in my calculator here. Minus 124, minus 30, minus 65, and I got 71 degrees. So what's BC? That's 71 degrees. So then how do we find angle BAC? Well, BAC is an, is an inscribed angle, and it goes to the arc of 71 degrees. We learned previously the inscribed angle is half as big as the central angle. Now, this might be a confusing example because they didn't draw in the central angle. The central angle is right here, and it would be 71 degrees as well. This is an inscribed angle to the same arc. So it is half as big. So 71 divided by two, that's 35 and a half degrees. So BAC is 35.5 degrees. And that's it. Let's try another one. Pause the video, draw it out. Let's see what you got. All right, what do I know? I know that OA is a radius. I know that OB is a radius, which makes this an isosceles triangle. That means this angle is 43. We know that every triangle has an interior angle sum of 180 degrees. So we're gonna go 180 minus 43 minus 43 and I get 94 degrees when I do that. So is that X? No, it's not. That's the central angle, and it's also this arc right here. So that's 94 degrees. Oops, that looks like 99, that's not right. 94 degrees, 94. 
So how does this inscribed angle X relate to the central angle? Well, remember, it's half as much. 94 divided by 2 is 47. So X is 47 degrees. Now we're going to look at something called Thales' Theorem. Okay, this is one of the ancient theorems. It's about 2,500 years old. Um, so we're talking back in ancient Greece in BC times that this first came up. Um, and it goes like this. Okay, it says that if you have a circle and you put a diameter on that circle, so that's what I have here, and you pick any other point, here's the any other point right there, that if you connect a triangle from the endpoints of the diameter, the endpoints of the diameter are D and B, to that point C, that it automatically makes a right angle. Okay, and I can move this around, and it might not be obvious, but no matter where I move that, it's a right angle. Now, why is that true? There's a couple reasons why that tr that's true. We're actually going to talk about two of them. Here's reason number one why that's a right angle. Just a minute ago, we learned about inscribed angles. This arc up here on the top, because this is a diameter, that's a 180 degree arc, which means this angle is 180 degrees. How does an inscribed angle relate to the central angle? It's half as much. Half as much as 180 is 90. So that's one reason why that's true. But there's a reason that I like even more. The second reason why Thales' theorem is true I'm going to show you with a proof right now. And this is actually one of my favorite proofs. Okay, it goes like this. First thing we realize, A to B is a radius and A to D is a radius. So each of those have the same length. What if I draw in another radius? Let's draw in, don't oh, redo. Let's draw in from A to C. That's the same length as well. So let's look at this triangle down here. It's isosceles. I don't know how many degrees are in this angle, but I know it's the same as that angle. Let's look at this triangle on the right. It's also isosceles. Now, it's not the same isosceles triangle. It's um, acute as opposed to the one on the left that looks like an obtuse triangle. So I don't know what this angle is, but whatever it is, I know that that's the same. Now, look at the whole big triangle. And remember that in any triangle, the interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So let's write out an equation that says that. So stuff is gonna add up to 180 degrees. Well, what are the interior angles? The first interior angle is right here, that's X. What's the next interior angle? That's over here, that's Y. So X and Y get added together. What's this angle down here? That's the third angle. How would you write that? It's X and it's Y, so that is X plus Y. Okay, so there's an equation that represents that fact we know that the interior angles will add up to 180 degrees. Let's do some algebra now. Okay, so collect like terms. I have x right here and x right there. That's a total of 2x. And I have y and y added together. That's 2y equals 180. Notice that both sides of this equation, every number, is divisible by 2. So let's simplify that out. Now, we get x plus y equals 90. Well, there it is. There's x plus y right there. That makes this a 90 degree angle. That's exactly what Thales' theorem says. It says if you have a diameter and you have an inscribed angle that goes to it, that's a 90 degree angle. Okay, so that's two reasons why that's true now. Pretty cool, huh? All right, here's our last new vocab term of the day, and that is a cyclic quadrilateral. I have a picture of one down here. Maybe you can already guess what a cyclic quadrilateral is. It is a quadrilateral formed by connecting four points on a circle. And you can see my four points on the circle right here. They are B, C, D, and E. So I have a cyclic quadrilateral here. And our question is about the opposite angles. So let's make a note of what the opposite angles would be. Opposite from each other. Now, D and C are not opposite. Those are adjacent to each other. So the pairs are D and across the shape is B, D and B, C and E. That's the pairs we're gonna be looking at. Let's start with D and B. And the question is, if I look at D and B, 
what relationship do they have and what do I know about them? Well, let's start here. What arc does D intercept? It's an arc that goes from C all the way around to E. And what do I know about the arc that is intercepted by B? So B goes out to E and C, it intercepts an arc that goes all the way around this other direction. And so what I want you to notice is that I've covered the entire circle exactly once by tracing those two arcs. Okay, now those are both inscribed angles, D and B both. So I don't know how many degrees is in the green arc, and I don't know how many degrees in the yellow arc either. I don't know, but I know that together they would add up to, so I know that the arc total is, is 360, because it goes all the way around the circle. Inscribed angles, we know from the very beginning of the video, are half the measure of their arc. So that means the angle total is half as big, which means it's 180. Now, would that still be true if we had looked at arcs C and E? Let's find out. So if we look, or excuse me, angle C and E. So angle C has an arc that goes around to B like that. And if I look only at angle E, it intercepts an arc that goes from B to D. So that also goes all the way around the circle. So that's true. Okay. So that leads to a fact. And we kind of, this is one thing I like about this topic is we started out with one theorem and from it, so many other things can be understood. And this is one of them. Okay. So what is the fact? Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are... What would be the word we would use to finish that off, everybody? How about, since they add up to 180, we say they are supplementary. Now, if you want to write down that they add up to 180 in your notes because you don't remember that word supplementary, that's fine, although we want to work toward um, comfortably using that word, but that's the fact. Now, let's take our learning from today and do some examples so we can see how it's used and we can try to solidify our understanding. Here's the first one. Write it down, give it a shot, pause the video, and then when you're ready for some feedback or help, hit play. This one's a pretty quick one. It's based on the very first thing we learned today. A is an inscribed angle, and we know the number of degrees in the central angle, and so A has to be half that amount, so it's 65 degrees. That's it. Next, give this one a try. Pause the video, let's see how you do. All right, this one's gonna take a little bit more thinking, I think. So what do I know? I think I wanna start here. Do I know how many degrees are in that arc? I do. Now you might be tempted to say it's 20, but that's not right because 20 is not the central angle. 20 is referring to this inscribed angle down here. And that means that this is 40 degrees in that arc. Now I'm not answering E as that, I'm saying that this is 40 right here. Okay, so I know that I have 40. I know that I have 96. What else can we say now? Well, I have a diameter right here. See this point right here? That's signifying that's the center of the circle. And since this line is going through it, that's the center of the circle. And what that tells me is that this half of the circle, because it's half, has 180 degrees. So if I did 180 minus 96, I would get that other arc. And that's 84. So I can say that this arc is 84. Now, if I know 84, I actually can find E right now. It's an inscribed angle across from 84, which means that it's half as much as 84. So that's 42. Let's label that here and let's label that here. So E is 42 degrees. And then how would I find D? Well, there's a couple ways. Um, I might look and say, since we had the right half of the circle, this is the left half of the circle. Half a circle or a semicircle is gonna be 180 degrees. And since we already have 40 right here, I'll do 180 minus 40 and I get 140 degrees. And that's what D is gonna be. And that's it. Let's do another one. Pause the video, hit play when you're ready to get some feedback. All right. So what do we know? This one will have to be a little bit creative. 
the thing that I'm going to start with is I know that I've got 75 right here. And 75 intercepts an arc like this. So what do I know about that arc? It has to be twice as big as the inscribed angle. So 75 times 2 is 150. So I know that this is 150. That's going to help me to find what G is. So how would we do that? Well, this is a circle. We know a circle has a sum total of 360. So I'm going to subtract the known 150 and the, and the known 110. And I'm going to type that in my calculator. So minus 150 minus 110. And I get 100 degrees. So G is 100. Now we need to try to go find F. So what do I know about angle F? I'm going to get rid of some of these markings on the page that might start to be more confusing than helpful. I'm going to leave on the ones that might be helpful. So what do I know about F? Angle F goes over to an arc of 110 plus, I don't know how much this part down here is, so I'm not sure if that's necessarily going to be helpful. Now what might be helpful is if I knew more angles inside this quadrilateral, because I know that a quadrilateral is going to have an angle sum of 360. We have 75 and 90. If I knew what this angle was, it would be easy to find F. So let's look at this angle down here for a minute. This angle goes up to F. Oh, let's try to redraw that and do a little bit better job. So it goes to F and it goes down to here, which means the arc it intercepts is this big arc. Well, that's good news. I know how big that arc is. It's 110 plus 100. So that's 210. And the inscribed angle across from the arc has to be half as much. So that's 105. And you know what? I think we're going to be able to answer this question now. So now I'm looking at a quadrilateral. I know that's going to add up to 360 and I have a 90 degree angle and I have a 75 degree angle and we just found a 105 degree angle. Let's type that in and see what we get. 360 minus 90 minus 75 minus 105 and that's 90. Now it might not look like it's not, although actually it kind of does look like it's 90. So 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there. And so that's it. We did it. Give it a shot. All right. What do we know? Inside, let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. We're looking at a hexagon. We know that every side of the hexagon is equal, so it's a regular hexagon. And since it's equal, that means that all of these arcs are going to have to be congruent. So we know that all the arcs add up to 360, and we've got six of them here, so each arc is 60. Well, that means that S is 60. What about angle R? How are we going to find that? So I'm going to draw in angle R. Angle R goes like this. The way I'm going to do it is I notice that R is an, is an inscribed angle, and I know that that's going to be half the measure of the arc that it intersects. So that arc goes around like this. And do I know what that is? Well, I know that part's 60, and that part's 60, and that part's 60, and that part's 60. 60 times 4, that's 240. So the arc is 240. And that means the angle is half as big, so that's 120. So R is 120 degrees. That's going to be all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.